place in a point of view of Nelson. Let's have first the objectives of the chapter 14, which are the following. First is to understand a sales type place on the part of Nelson. Next is to define gross investment and net investment in the sales type lease. And lastly, to recognize the gross income on sale and interest income in a sales type lease. Let's now proceed in our discussion. So first, what is lessor in a sales type lease? In a sales type lease, lessor is a manufacturer or a dealer. It uses the lease as the means of facilitating the sale of product. The accounting for a sales type lease exhibits many similarities to that for a direct financing lease. However, a sales type lease involves the recognition of a manufacturer or a dealer profit on the transfer of the asset to the lessee, in addition to the recognition of interest income. Sales type lease. In a sales type lease, we have first the gross investment. So, yung gross investment is equal siya sa gross rentals for the entire lease term plus yung amount ng residual value whether it is guaranteed or unguaranteed. Next naman is yung sa net investment. So, para makuha siya yung present value ng gross rentals Ia-add sa present value ng residual value, whether it is guaranteed or unguaranteed din. So, para naman sa unearned interest income, simple lang siya kasi ilalas lang naman natin siya sa net investment sa gross investment. In sales revenue naman, equal lang siya sa net investment or fair value of the asset, kung alin man ang mas mababa. Kung walang fair value, therefore, the sales revenue is the same amount of that investment. As the cost of goods sold naman, the initial direct cost paid by the lessor will be added to the cost of the asset sold and ilalas yung present value of unguaranteed residual value. In gross income naman, the usual formula will be used na kung saan yung sales revenue less the cost of goods sold, yun na yung gross income natin. Sa initial direct cost naman, it is expensed immediately in a sales type lease as a component of a cost of goods sold. So, let's see this sample illustration for us to appreciate more our discussion. The lesson company is a dealer in machinery. On January 1, 2021, a machinery was leased to Lessie Company with the following provision. The annual rental payable at the end of each year is amounting to 400000 The lease term is 5 years. The useful life of machinery is 5 years as well. And the cost of machinery is amounting to 1 million. The implicit interest rate is 12%. And the present value of annuity of, four, of 1 for 5 years at 12% is 3.16. So, let's solve this following requirement. First is, how much is the gross investment? So, first is the amount of gross investment. Bali, yung gross rental natin is equal to 2 million. Kasi yung 400,000 na annual rental is multiply natin sa lease term which is 5 years, and dahil walang residual value, 2 million will be our gross investment. Next naman is magkano ang ating net investment. The amount of net investment, the present value of rentals, will be added to the present value of residual value. Pero dahil walang residual value na given, therefore our net investment will be 1,440,000 which is the rent, which is the equal of 400,000 times the 3.60 Next naman is yung sa unearned interest income The unearned interest income is just simple Let's just deduct the net investment amounting to 1,440,000 in gross investment 2 million and then we will get 
the 560,000 and earn interest income. So, sa sales naman, simple lang din. Because the sales is equal to net investment in the lease or fair value of the asset, whichever is lower. At dahil wala namang fair value na given, therefore, our sales revenue will be 1,440,000. In finding cost of goods sold naman, let's just add the initial direct cost in cost of machinery. Pero dahil wala rin given na initial direct cost, Therefore, ang amount ng ating cost of goods sold is 1 million. And sa gross income, the usual formula will be used. So, the sales amounting to 1,440,000 will be less to the amount of the cost of goods sold 1 million. And then, we will get the 440,000 gross income. So, para naman sa journal entries, here are the following entries. So, first, we will debit the lease receivable 2 million, credit sales 1 million for 140,000, credit and earned interest income 560,000 to record the same. Next naman is debit the cost of goods sold 1 million, credit inventory amounting to 1 million to record the cost of goods sold, debit cash 400,000. And credit lease receivable for 100,000 to record the collection of the annual rental. And lastly, debit the unearned interest income 172,800 and credit interest income 172,800 to record the interest income for 2021. So now let's have the sales type lease with residual value. Here is another illustration for us to understand the sales type lease with receivable value. The lease company is a dealer in machinery. On January 1, 2021, a machinery is leased to another entity with the following provisions. The annual rental payable at the end of each year amounting to 800000 The lease term is 5 years. The useful life of machinery is 5 years as well. The cost of machinery is $2 million. The residual value is 200,000. The initial direct cost paid by the lessor is 100,000. And the implicit interest rate is 10%. The present value of an ordinary annuity of 1 for 5 years, 5 periods at 10% is 3.7908. The present value of 1 for 5 periods at 10% is 0 0.6209. So, at the end of the lease term on December 31, 2025, the machinery shall revert to the lesser company. Revert means babalik kay lesser. The perpetual inventory system is used. So, let's solve the following requirements. To get the amount of gross investment, let's just add the residual value guaranteed amounting to 200000 in the gross rentals amounting to 4 million. So, yung 4 million na kuha siya sa 800,000 times the 5 years lease term. Therefore, the gross income is amounting to 4,200,000. Sa net investment naman, the 3,032,640 of present value of the gross rentals, which is the product of 800,000 and 3.7908, will be added to 124,180 of present value of the residual value guaranteed, which is the product of 200,000 and 0.6209. So therefore, the total of net investment will be 3,156,820. So how much is the unearned interest income? The unearned interest income is the difference between the gross investment and the net investment. Therefore, 4,200,000 less 3,156,820 is equal to 1,043,180. So, sa sales revenue naman, again, as what I said earlier, the sales revenue is equal to the net investment or fair value of the asset. At dahil wala ulit fair value na given, 
Therefore, the sales will be 3,156,830. So, next is the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is 2,100,000, which is the sum of the cost of the machinery, 2 million, and initial direct cost, 100,000. To get the gross income naman, just deduct the 2,100,000 to the sales 3,156,820. Therefore, our gross income is 1,056,820. For our journal entries on January 1, 2021, let's debit the least receivable 4,200,000, debit cost of goods sold 2 million, credit sales amounting to 3,156,820, credit and earned interest income 1,043,180, and credit inventory 2 million. And also, debit the cost of goods sold amounting to 100,000 and credit cash amounting to 100,000. We are, now, we are now done in the sales type list with residual value guarantee. Ngayon naman is unguaranteed residual value. We will be using the same illustration from the previous slide para mas ma-distinguish natin na may pagkakaiba sa pagsasol between unguaranteed and guaranteed residual value. So, here is the following requirements. Here is the computation of gross investment net investment, and an earned interest income. Observe that their total amounts are just the same whether the scenario is guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value. Kung saan yung gross investment is still 4,200,000. The net investment is 3,156,820. At yung an earned interest income is still amounting to 1,043,000 180. However, there is a difference in the computation of the sales and the cost of goods sold. So here is the computation and we will see that the total of sales and the cost of goods sold are not the same from the previous computation we had in guaranteed residual value. First in sale, where in the total of it will be net investment less the present value of the unguaranteed residual value. Therefore, 3,156,820 minus the 124,820. Yang amount na yan is nakuha dahil pinag-multiply yung 200,000 at 0 0.6209. As of that, the total sales will be 3,032,000. Next naman is the cost of goods sold. It is solved through adding the cost of the machinery, 2 million, and initial direct cost, 100,000. Then less the present value of unguaranteed residual value, amounting to 124,820. Therefore, the cost of goods sold is amounting to 1,975,180. For the gross income naman, it will be just the same formula. Sales amounting to 3,032,000 less the amount of cost of goods sold, 1,975,180. The gross income will be 1,056,820. Note that the gross income must be the same under the guaranteed and unguaranteed residual value scenario. So for the journal entries naman, to record the sales and initial direct cost on January 1, 2021 under the concept of, of unguaranteed residual value. So first, let's debit the least receivable amounting to 4,200,000, debit cost of goods sold 1,875,820. Let's credit the sales 3,032,640. Credit and earned interest income amounting to 1,043,180 and credit inventory 2 million. Let's also debit the cost of goods sold amounting to 100,000 and credit cash amounting to 100,000. 
So let's now proceed to the current amount. In solving the current amount for December 31, 2021, the payment of 800000 less the interest amounting to 315682 Bale, nakuha siya through multiplying the 10% and 3,156,800 less 3,156,820 value. We will get the principal amounting to 484,318. After we get the 484,318, we will deduct it to the net receivable of January 1, 2021 amounting to 3 million. 156,820. Therefore, the carrying amount for December 31, 2021 is 2,672,502. So, for the journal entries on December 31, 2021, let's debit cash amounting to 800,000, credit list receivable 800,000 to record the collection of the annual rental. And also, we debit the unearned interest income, 315,682, and credit an interest income amounting to 315,682 to record the interest income for 2021. For the next part of Chapter 14, Sales Types List Lessor, before we proceed to our next topic, let's read this first. On the expiry of the contract period and depending on the condition of the asset, the asset or property is returned to the lessor, although the lessee may have an option to purchase the asset. We will discuss the two topics from this paragraph. The first one is that the asset or property is returned to the lessor or return of asset to lessor. And the next topic is the lessee may have an option to purchase the asset or sales type list with purchase option. Let's first discuss the asset or property is returned to the lessor or the return of asset to lessor. Here are the important notes to remember. First, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, residual value, the entry on the books of the lessor is the same. Next, guaranteed residual value, the lessee, shall make up for the deficiency by paying the difference. And last, unguaranteed residual value, the lessor shall recognize a loss for the difference. I will discuss each one with example. Here is our example. When the lease expires on December 31, 2023, anong mangyayari sa lease kapag nag-expire na, the machinery shall revert, revert or babalik to the lessor company. The first important note that we will discuss is whether guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value, the entry on the books of the lessor is the same. For example, the lease receivable is 550,000. Ganto natin siya i-record. Since babalik na siya kay lessor, i-debit natin si inventory, which is the machinery of 550,000. Then credit Least receivable of 550,000. So, for our next important points is guaranteed residual value, the lessee shall make up for the deficiency by paying the difference. So, bago natin maipakita ang example na ito, uh, may karagdagan tayong given. Additional given is fair value of the machinery on December 31, 2023 is only 400,000. So, pagdating ng expiration ng lease, ang fair value na lang ni machinery ay 400,000 from 550,000 before. Makikita natin ang difference na 150,000. Dito, papasok na ang pagkakaiba ng treatment ng residual value ni guaranteed at ni unguaranteed. So, under guaranteed residual value, the lessee shall make up for the deficiency by paying the difference. Ibig sabihin ng residual value na 150,000 ang ibabayaran ni Lessie. Si Lessie ang may shoulder. Ganito natin siya i-record. Debit cash of 150,000. Ito yung binayad, o binayaran ni Lessie. Ito yung deficiency na shoulder ni Lessie. 
Then debit din ang fair value ni machinery which is 400,000. We will credit the least receivable of 550,000. So for the last point, it is about unguaranteed residual value. Paano naman kapag unguaranteed? Unguaranteed residual value, the lessor shall recognize a loss for the difference. Si lessor naman ang mag-shoulder ng residual value pero imbis na bayaran ay ire-recognize ang 150,000 as lost on finance list. Ganito din natin siya um, ire-record. Debit the lost on finance list of 150,000 then debit the fair value of machinery of 400,000 then credit the least receivable of 550,000. So remember, sa return of asset to lessor, kay guaranteed si lessee ang mag-shoulder at babayaran niya in cash. Kapag unguaranteed, si lessor ang mag-shoulder at ititreat niya ang residual value as loss on finance list. So under ng return of asset to lessor, ito ang mga additional notes to remember. First is the underlying asset shall revert to the lessor upon termination of the contract. Ibig sabihin, from our discussion, kapag na-expire na ang contract, ay babalik na kay lessor ang inventory kung ito ang napag-usapan ni lessor at ni lessee. Next point is, if the underlying asset shall not revert to the lessor, the residual value is completely ignored by the lessor in the computation of the unearned interest income and gross income on the sale. So, sabi naman dito, kapag ang napag-usapan sa pag-expire ng contract ay hindi na babalik kay lesser ang inventory, the residual value is completely ignored sa pag-record ng unearned interest income at gross income. Uh, next naman na point is about the underlying asset shall remain with the lessee. If the lease provides for either a purchase option that is reasonably certain to be exercised or transfer of title to the lessee upon the lease expiration. So, hindi na babalik ang inventory kay lessor kapag si lessee ay may purchase option or transfer of title. Now that we mentioned the purchase option, it is our next topic to be discussed. So, the lessee may have an option to purchase the asset or sales type lease with purchase option. So, here is the important note to remember. It is reasonably certain that the lessee shall exercise the purchase option on the date of expiration. So, mapapansin natin na nakahighlight dyan yung reasonably certain. Ang meaning kasi niyan, may possibility na bibilhin ni Lessie yung lease at the end of the term. And magkakaroon ng transfer of ownership si Lessor kay Lessie. Okay? We will use the example from our book starting from page 452. Example problem, page 452 to 454. An entity is a dealer. Uh, pag may dealer, meaning none, it is a sales type list. And equipment. On January 1, 2021, an equipment is leased to another entity with the following provision. So, let's read the given. Annual rental payable at the end of each year is 500000 Lease term is 4 years. Useful life of equipment is 5 years. Cost of equipment is 1 million. Initial direct cost paid by lessor is 100,000. Purchase op option is 200,000. Implicit interest rate is 8%. And present value of an ordinary annuity of 1 at 8% for 4 periods is 3.312. And present value of 1 at 8% for 4 periods are 0.735. So, mapapansin natin sa dulo ng given na kalagay is, it is reasonably certain that the lessee shall exercise the purchase option on December 31, 2024. Meaning, sa December 31, 2024, may possibility na bibilhin ni lessee yung list kay lessor. 
So, from this given, we will compute for the following. First, gross investment, net investment, unearned interest income, cost of goods sold, and gross income. But since it is not the focus of our discussion about purchase option and it is discussed before this topic, to highlight our topic about purchase option, we will jump to page 454. So from our given, sinabi sa huli na it is reasonably certain that the lessee shall exercise the purchase option on December 31, 2024. So paulit-ulit ako dito sa reasonably certain. Kasi just like what I've said, na may possibility na bilhin ni Lessie ang list item, pero, but, meron din na possibility na umatras at hindi na may exercise ang purchase option. There are two scenarios, which are the exercise of the purchase option and non-exercise of purchase option. So, to illustrate the exercise and non-exercise of purchase option, here are the given we will use. Okay, assume natin na December 31, 2024 na. Ito yung mga given. The purchase option is 200,000. The unearned interest income is zero balance. And the fair value of the underlying asset is 100,000. On December 31, 2024, if the entries are properly posted, the least receivable had a balance of 200,000 equal to the purchase option and the unearned interest income had a zero balance. So, uh, for kapag an exercise of purchase option, ang magiging journal natin, cash of 200,000, least receivable of 200,000. The purchase option is exercised by the lessee on December 31, 2024. Paano naman kapag non-exercise of purchase option? Ganto ang journal niya. Inventory of 100,000 and then loss on finance list 100,000 and then list receivable 200,000. The, pur the purchase option is not exercised by the lessee and the fair value of the underlying asset is 100,000 only. So, hindi tunupad ni lessee ang purchase option and the fair value of the underlying asset is December 31, 2024. So, doon nang galing yung loss on finance list, yung 100,000. So, uh, from the fair value na 200,000, naging uh, 100,000 na lang sa December 31, 2024. So, that is why the lessor incur loss. That's the loss of finance list. So to summarize, purchase option, it is reasonably certain. May possibility na bilhin, pero may possibility rin na hindi. So kapag exercise, babayaran ng cash and then least receivable credit. Kapag non-exercise uh, purchase option, kunwari umatras si Lessie at the end of the period, ayaw niya nang i-exercise yung purchase option. Ang, mangy ang mangyayari kapag bumaba na yung fair value ni asset ay mag incur ng loss si lessor. Yun yung magiging loss on finance list natin. No? So, uh, for our next topic, it is about actual sale of underlying asset which is hindi na tinapos yung lister, binili na agad ni lessee. So, the actual sale of underlying asset. When a lessor actually sells an asset that it has been leasing under a finance lease. Yun yung meaning ni actual sale of underlying asset. So, here are the important notes to remember. First, the carrying amount of the lease receivable is equal to the balance of the lease receivable minus the unearned interest income. So, ang formula para makuha si carrying amount of the least receivable is least receivable minus the unearned interest income. So, next point is the difference between the sale price and the carrying amount of the least receivable is recognized in profit or loss. So, di ba nagkaroon ng actual sale of underlying asset? Paano ba malalaman kapag nag-gain ka ba ng profit o nag- karoon ka pa ng loss. So, uh, selling price versus 
carrying amount of least receivable. Kapag mas mataas si selling price sa kay, kaysa kay carrying amount of least receivable ay nagkaroon ka ng gain. Kapag mas mataas si selling price kaysa kay carrying amount of the least receivable. Pero kapag mas mataas naman si carrying amount of least receivable kaysa kay sale price uh, kaysa kay selling price ay nagkaroon ka ng loss. Okay, doon makikita yung profit or loss. Dapat para magkaroon ng profit, mas mataas dapat si selling price at para hindi magkaroon ng loss, dapat mas mataas selling price. Kapag mas mataas naman si carrying amount of least receivable ay ang nakuha na lessor ay loss. Okay, to illustrate the actual sale of underlying asset, let's have two example. Okay, for given A, selling price is 1 million, lease receivable is 1 million 200,000, and earned interest income is 700,000. So, here is the computation. Sell, uh, selling price is 1 million, the carrying amount of lease receivable, paano siya makuha? Least receivable, less the unearned interest income. From our given, the least receivable is 1,200,000 and the unearned interest income is 700,000. So, uh, 1 to 1,200,000 less to 700,000 equals 500,000. And then the selling price is 1,000,000. 1 million, the selling price, the carrying amount of lease receivable is only 500,000. Uh, Ilalas natin silang dalawa and nagkaroon ng gain on sale of lease equipment of 500,000. Kaya naging gain dahil mas mataas si selling price kaysa kay carrying amount. Next example, given B, selling price of 5,500,000 Lease receivable of 7 million and an earned interest income of 1 million. So the computation, selling price of 5 million 500,000 and to compute the carrying amount of lease receivable, lease receivable minus the unearned interest income. From our uh, example, lease, lease receivable is 7 million less to the unearned interest income of 1 million equals 6 million. So, the selling price is 5,500,000 and then the carrying amount of lease receivable is 6 million. So, uh, the result is loss on sale of lease equipment dahil uh, may negative 500,000 tayo. Kaya naging loss naman dahil mas mataas si carrying amount of lease receivable kaysa kay selling price. For our last topic for chapter 14, it is about disclosure requirements to the point of view of the lessor. To summarize the important disclosure, here is our chart. For disclosure from the point of view of lessor, uh, we use this chart and to explain that, uh, disclosure requirement, the main and the additional disclosures. Let's start to main disclosures. A lessor shall disclose the following amounts for the reporting period. For finance lease, you need to disclose first if it is direct financing lease or sales type lease. Since dalawa ang under ni, uh, dalawa ang under ni finance lease, kailangan nyo munang uh, i-disclose kung alin doon sa dalawang yon, Kung direct ba or sales type. After after identifying, here are the disclosure required in finance list. Selling profit or loss, finance income, and income from variable list payment. Next, for operating list naman, you need to disclose the list income and the income related to variable list payment. After main disclosure, now for additional disclosure, a lessor shall disclose additional qualitative and quantitative information about leasing activities. Here are the info needed to disclose. The leasing activities and the lessor's risk management. Uh, here are the required or disclosures requirements. 
for the point of view of lessor. This is where our reports end. Thank you for listening. We are hoping that you learned a lot of information about Chapter 14 Sales Type List. I am Giselle Vesinable, together with my partner, Michelle Bremont. Thank you for listening.